So while connective tissue disease is predisposed to the development of pulmonary hypertension, the risk of developing pulmonary hypertension varies by underlying connective tissue disease. It's important to understand the different groups of pulmonary hypertension and the relative risk of developing pulmonary hypertension based upon these specific connective tissue diseases. So many connective tissue diseases lead to interstitial lung disease or fibrotic lung disease, which causes damage to the lung tissue and the lung blood vessels. With development of interstitial lung disease, the pressures in the lungs can rise and lead to pulmonary hypertension. This is one of the most common forms of pulmonary hypertension in the setting of connective tissue disease. Perhaps a more common form of connective tissue disease impact on the left side of the heart relates to what is known as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction or diastolic dysfunction. In this scenario, the squeezing function of the left ventricle is normal, but its relaxing or filling function is abnormal. So blood pressure in the left side of the heart can be back transmitted to the lungs, leading to high blood pressure in the lungs. Both HEF-PEF, or diastolic dysfunction, and congestive heart failure can lead to pulmonary hypertension. It's very common and important to understand that this differs from the pulmonary hypertension that occurs in the setting of interstitial lung disease. Patients with connective tissue disease also may be more prone to developing blood clots, both in their legs and in their lungs. And over time, pulmonary hypertension can develop in the lungs related to blood clots. This is more common in certain forms of connective tissue disease, and the risk of pulmonary hypertension of this form should be evaluated and assessed based upon the underlying connective tissue disease. Connective tissue diseases can also affect kidney function and the hematologic system. Both of these systems, if impacted by the connective tissue disease, can lead to elevated pressures in the lungs through various mechanisms. The rarest form of pulmonary hypertension that can be seen in connective tissue disease is known as pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. And it's very important to distinguish PAH from the other types of pulmonary hypertension that I just described. Pulmonary arterial hypertension can only be diagnosed by right heart catheterization, and importantly, cannot exist with these other forms of pulmonary hypertension. So if you have left heart disease, congestive heart failure, for example, or significant interstitial lung disease, or blood clots in your lungs, or renal failure, then by definition, you do not have pulmonary arterial hypertension. This is very important to understand because our treatment options depend greatly upon which form of pulmonary hypertension you have.